Hi everybody and welcome back to another tutorial or video in the Making E1 M1 with ProBuilder series. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how you can best optimize your scene using ProBuilder and this, a lot of this could also uh, be applied to using regular imported meshes or anything at all within Unity. Bit of a disclaimer, I'm not necessarily an expert or anything on the optimization within Unity but I do think I've used it a bit and I can at least give you guys quite a few good hints and tips to really make the most of the level. We'll be focusing mainly on how you can make this work well with Umbra, which is the occlusion solution that's built into Unity. It's an awesome tool set. Definitely make sure you're, you're using this. For example, I had this scene running without any occlusion and it was running anywhere from 300 to 700 draw calls in any given area. Now it's down to about anywhere from 30 to 80, which is just awesome to have. So definitely make use of that and we'll be showing you how best to do it right here. The first thing with occlusion is to make sure that your scene is set up, or I should say chopped up, in ways that will work well with it. Best way to think about this is when you're in an area, what can you see? And what areas can be broken down into their own specific parts? So I'm going to open up the Pro Groups window that I have as well. And I've broken up the areas of this level into several distinct sections. Number one, we have the final room here. So I can turn that on and off and see it. The first area, which is this large chunk here, notice there's there are no doors anywhere. So at any point, you can generally say, if you're spinning the camera around, you can see this entire area. Then we have the large room here, or the large open room. There's the courtyard, the tunnel, and the green room. So it's the slime pit room or whatever you might want to call it there. So by breaking up the level into these chunks essentially, you can get a good idea of how you want to start setting up the occlusion. And going by where doors are, or at least major uh, dividers between rooms, is probably the best way to do it. You can really get a, a good idea of where the sections and chunks are from that. Next you want to decide which objects should be blocking occlusion and which objects should be blocked by or also blocking occlusion. And the idea is something like, if we look at, for example, these pillars here, when the player camera or when the player is standing anywhere in this room, should this or should these pillars be allowed to block the player's sight or will they be able to? And the answer is pretty obviously not at all or very little. So for example, if I'm standing here looking uh, towards the courtyard, even behind this pillar, I'm very likely to see just about everything. It's gonna block out a very small amount of items. So you definitely don't want an item like this to actually be an occluder because it's going to take up uh, more time on the CPU to calculate that occlusion than it is to simply let it show whatever would be behind it. So you want to make sure these are set as simple detail objects. So remember over here we have the auto viz groups here. You can turn on and off any of the detail items and you can see them turn off here. On the other hand, if you have an object that is going to block sight, for example, the courtyard wall here, when you're down in the courtyard, there's quite a bit blocked out by these walls. Same goes for really any of these large walls here. In fact, this entire structure here as well. So with items like this, you want to make sure and set them as a world type. You can do that by hitting O on your keyboard. And the little pop-up says set to occluder. Basically, that means it's going to occlude items. So world objects will occlude, detail objects will not. However, both of those types will be occluded, which means that, for example, if I am over in this room, the occlusion system knows that I can't see this area here, so it essentially turns it right off. Oops, there we go. So you'll want to go through your level, find any areas or items meshes that are going to be blocking visibility and make sure and set them as the world detail type. You can turn that off just like this and back on with the viz groups here. This is a very good way to quickly see how your level is coming together and how it's built up in terms of world detail and mover objects, things like elevators and doors. You can quickly toggle any of that on and off here in the viz groups panel. So let's move on to actually baking in the occlusion then. First just go up to window and down to occlusion culling. I'll move the camera view out of the way for now. I'll also move off the Pro Groups window. We don't need to see that right now. And right away, we'll see it says no occlusion data has been baked. We need to bake that in. So over in the bake window, 
you can set up a few options here. We'll leave it all on default for now. Just go ahead and click bake so we can get a basic setting going. And the new Umbra Occlusion system is incredibly fast. Uh, it's wonderful, makes sure you upgrade to the latest version of Unity. So there we have it, it bakes out some quick volumes and sets it up. And then if we go to the visualization, you'll notice that based on the camera, it's going to decide what can actually be seen. So this can be neat to watch if we hit play. I'll bring out the window here, turn off these stats so they're not in the way, and jump into the game. So now we can watch as the camera moves around exactly what Umbra has decided, or the occlusion system, has decided this can be viewed and that can't. You can see the smaller objects popping in and out nicely, and occasionally we have some things show up that probably shouldn't be showing. So this just means we need to set a little more finely tuned occlusion setup here. So this you can see is already saving quite a bit of uh, rendering power and draw calls. Notice as I'm looking right at this wall, the camera now knows it can't see anything else out of this, which is great. That's definitely what we want. But there's some things that could be better here as well. Also, while I'm looking at this, we can see that it might be better if I chopped up these meshes a bit. Notice how just by looking out this door, it decides to render that entire portion, the first area of the level there. I could probably chop that hallway into a separate mesh, and then it would only render that one small portion instead of all of that at once. It also seems like I have something essentially leaking where it thinks I can see the courtyard from here. And these are all small things that you can work on tweaking and making better as you start building the occlusion and chopping up your meshes more efficiently, as well as welding them together. Obviously, more meshes are going to equal more draw calls in many cases, so there's a good balance you have to find between. Luckily, this is just one more thing that Unity is awesome at in that you can really easily visualize just about everything you're doing all the time uh, without having to spend hours baking it or something and waiting like back in the old days. So let's exit play mode here and take a look at how we can make this occlusion just a bit better. We'll switch to the bake tab. And here the first thing I'll do, or really the, the only major thing, is set the smallest occluder size to two. And this will make it bake out much more fine-tuned occlusion data. It means the size of the data is larger, but I think it's a good trade-off to have. With that set, I'll just click on Bake. And it will take slightly longer to bake that and go from 50 kilobytes to 263 kilobytes. So a pretty large jump, but I think the data size still isn't so much it's going to cause any trouble. With the new information now, the occlusion system should be much more adept at picking out small areas uh, that it can block off or that the camera doesn't need to see. So again, a pretty good compromise there. If you move over to the visualization tab, you can see a lot more info about what exactly the occlusion system is doing. Down on the left hand or right hand side here, you can turn on visibility lines and portals. So you can see exactly what's happening. And this is something that we won't really be getting into all the depths of in this tutorial. There's quite a bit there, uh, and I myself am still learning it a bit as well. But simply adding in the occlusion, baking it once or twice, and checking it back and forth can really save you a lot of performance hits. And that's it for the occlusion optimization in this video. Obviously lots of little things that I could probably tweak as I was saying, just chopping off this hallway or this corridor into a separate mesh, perhaps even this area up here. I've noticed I could add the stair. Just remember not to worry about this stuff too much until you get to the end stages because otherwise the entire process can take a very long time if you're micromanaging at a small scale. Best to just get everything built out with broad brush strokes and then move right along towards the, uh, the more fine-tuned work such as optimization, lighting, texturing, etc. towards the end. So thanks for watching and see you guys in the future tutorials here.